All right, welcome back. Shalom, watawabi wam. As always, I want to begin by giving the praises, the glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, which is the true power of the heaven and earth in the name of his only begotten Son. I want to give double honors to my teachers, the apostles of Great Millstone. I want to give peace, mercy, and salutations to the hopeful elect. Shalom, to you. This is uh, another edition of Sunrise Spiritual Speaking, Volume 3, which is uh, on my spirit this morning to speak about, you know, Christians and, and uh, the Roman Empire then and now. And I was just kind of thinking how, you know, because I got this chick that I deal with and, you know, she's uh, she she listens to this this false uh, this false prophet. And, you know, I was just thinking how these, uh, you know, what the because it's already not a, a, a lot of Christians left. Honestly, in my opinion, I don't, I don't think it's a lot of people that identify with uh, Christianity anymore. But even the few that <laughs> remain, it's like, do they ever actually think about Christ? All right. Because because when you say Christian, you're saying followers of Christ, which I did a uh, basics breakdown the other day. Going into Christ just means the Messiah or the anointed one. All right. So when you think about the Messiah, when he was here 2000 years ago, you got to understand that that was a time period where our people, the Israelites, were in. We were in the land of uh, Israel. All right. But we had Israelites that were scattered abroad throughout that whole region, throughout the world. But the 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 dominating uh, power of that time was the Holy Roman Empire. All right. Well, let me not say holy, but the uh, the Roman Empire. All right. Which is uh, Esau Edom's kingdom. All right. That was the fourth beast that was prophesied to come in Daniel, the seventh chapter. And you got to understand during that time you had you had the Messiah who had came and went, you know, <laughs> uh, three year ministry. And then he, uh, you know, was put to death and then resurrected and went back to the heavens. But you had people that believed on him. You know what I'm saying? And during that time, you had a, a bunch of idolatry going on, man. Same thing today. So you, within a society full of idolaters, you had people that were following after the Messiah saying, you know, he's the one. This is the way. Right. Which caused, uh, you know, a lot of trouble and caused, uh, you know, strife and and led to persecution of these people that follow this man. So you got to it's, it's funny how. You, you have so-called Christians today, they don't even consider that. You know what I'm saying? They think that being a Christian is just about, you know, pretty much uh, forwarding and being prosperous in this, this evil-ass, wicked society, which is, is not true, you know? But let's read, let's read, uh, let's talk about these Roman gods that were around back then, <laughs> you know, because I was just thinking, I was like, man, you had fucking, you had Mars, you had Jupiter, you had uh, Dionysus, Bacchus, you know what I'm saying? You had these different uh, gods that were being worshipped back then. And then you had those who were following the Messiah saying, no, don't don't worship those things. We can't do that. You know, these are idols. So that caused trouble. Just like today, you have us today. You got all these different things that are, uh, are worshipped to the day. Uh, these are uh, various uh, sexual perversions. You have uh, women being worshipped. You have the sun, you know, uh, being worshipped. You have uh, nature and the universe being worshipped. Um, but anyway, man, Roman gods, it says, aside from the spirits worship privately at home, the Romans had a large number of public gods. Many gods were believed to have taken part in the founding of Rome. All were consulted and honored to make sure that the actions of the state met with divine approval. Roman religion was split in two. Privately, families and households worshiped specific individual spirits. Publicly, the Roman state honored many gods, all of which were believed to have human characteristics. All right. Um, um, I'm just going to breeze through. As a result, Roman gods were a blend of deities with close similarities to the gods worship in the ancient Greeks. Why? Because these are the same people. All right. The Roman gods, the Greek gods, uh, these were Edomites and their idols. It says, in particular, the 12 greatest gods and goddesses in the Roman state religion called the Di Consensus paralleled the gods of Greek mythology. Although they kept Latin names and images, the links between Roman and Greek gods gradually came together. All right, this is the, uh, the third and fourth beast. So, the big three. All right, the three most important gods were Jupiter, protector of the state, Juno, protector of the women, and Minerva, goddess of craft and wisdom. Other major gods included Mars, god of war. Mercury, god of trade and messenger of the gods, and Bacchus, god of grapes and wine production. 
All right. Uh, Romans also believed that many of their gods had played an active part in the foundation of Rome. Venus was believed to be the mother of Anus, who, according to legend, had founded Rome, which, see, it wasn't these guys that had anything to do with the founding of Rome. It was the prophecies. It was the, you know, it was the, the prophecy of the, Yahweh, the Heavenly Father coming to pass because this was prophesied to come. This is Daniel chapter seven. Look, verse one, it says in the first year of Belshazzar, king of Babylon, Daniel had a dream and visions of his head upon his bed. Then he wrote the dream and told the summon the matter. So this began uh, with a dream that a heathen had. Oh, no, no, no. I'm sorry. So like you, Daniel had this dream. Right. And he had this, this these visions of of of, uh, of these different time periods. All right. But the, the, the dream had it to where these were like different uh, beasts. You see, it says uh, verse two, Daniel spake and said, I saw in my vision by night and behold, the four winds of the heaven strove upon the great sea and four great beasts came up from the sea, diverse one from another. So four great beasts, these four great beasts were symbolic of four different rulerships, okay? The first was like as a lion and had eagle's wings, um, which when you read on, uh, this is going into, it said a, a lion and had eagle's wings. This is the animal known as the griffin, which was synonymous with the Assyrians. All right, but when you continue to go down, because the Assyrian empire was great, and that, you know, that came and, you know, had a time period where they was conquering things, and, you know, they took down the... You know, they, they ran Babylon and then they came and, 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 and swept through Jake, uh, Jake out there in the land, carried the northern kingdom into captivity. But when you continue on down, the fourth beast, this was the Roman Empire. So it was the most high to set this kingdom up. All right, Daniel 7 to 7, after this, I saw in the night visions and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. All right. And what made this uh, fourth beast so so strong and terrible and, and had the great iron teeth, it had a powerful military. All right. Uh, Rome, the Roman Empire is known for, you know, its, its conquering might, its military. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. Yep. Because it, it, it conquered uh, all over that that known world at the time. And it put them under as uh, vassals. OK. Which made them what? subordinate to the roman empire even israel we we were uh during the time of the messiah we were a vassal of the, of the roman empire you know we had to pay uh you know a uh, uh, tributary it says and it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and what made it diverse is that it had it didn't have the traditional uh mon you know uh, monarchy of where uh, a patriarchal uh, monarchy where you had kings who would pass it down the rulership down to their sons to take the throne this one had a, um you know a, a senate all right it says that and from all the beasts that were it was diverse from all the beasts that were before it and it had 10 horns all right and the 10 horns again were the uh the 10 vassals in europe all right the goths the uh you know the visigoths the uh the vandals etc so you know, this kingdom was set up by the Lord, not by, you know, these different Roman idols. This is uh, Daniel 4 and 17, and we're going to go back to it. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set up, setteth up over it the basis of men. All right. So in NLT, it says this decision, this decision, the decision is announced by the messengers. The holy ones declare the verdict so that the living may know that the most high is sovereign over all kingdoms on earth and gives them to anyone he wishes and sets over them the lowliest of people. All right. So these people were set up. You know, these guys didn't set up a damn thing. Um, I want to read this real quick because, again, you know, it's like these these people who claim to be Christian don't have in the mind that, what that means to be a follower of the, of the Messiah. You know, persecution came along with this because it's going to tell you that there was a clash here because you had people that was living one way and then another people that were saying, no, nah, we, we can't do that. You know, and eventually that that caught that that created, a, a, you know, a problem. So it says the persecution of Christians occurred sporadically, usually locally throughout the Roman Empire, beginning in the first century CE and ending in the fourth century CE. 
originally a polytheistic empire in the traditions of Roman paganism and the Hellenistic religion, as Christianity spread through the empire, it came into ideological conflict with the imperial cult of ancient Rome. Pagan practices such as making sacrifices to the deified emperors or other gods were abhorrent to Christians as their beliefs prohibited idolatry. See, so following the Messiah led to a particular group of people separating from what everyone else was doing. And in this society, you don't see the average so-called Christian separating themselves from the things of this society. The average so-called Christian will celebrate Christmas will celebrate Thanksgiving, will dress their kids up with uh, for Halloween, dress themselves up, right? And then be the church on Sunday talking about praise God, hallelujah. It says, the state and other members of civic society punish Christians for treason, various rumored crimes, illegal assembly, and for introducing an alien cult that led to Roman apostasy, all right? And that's even in the scriptures, that, that word apostasy which is uh falling away because what what does uh what does this do following the messiah is is about what the truth he said that he is the way the truth and the life right second thessalonians 2 and 3 let no man deceive you by any means for that day should not come the day of the lord except there come a falling away first which we fail away uh this was uh fulfilled 70 a.d when the romans you know besieged jerusalem Ended up, you know, destroying the temple, you know, and our people ended up eventually, you know, coming over here and, and, and becoming slaves. And, you know, the heritage was, was taken away from us. It says in that man of sin be revealed the son of perdition. And when you go into the word falling away, there it is. It's the Greek word apostasy, apost apostasia, a falling away, defecation, apostasy. So it said it said and for introducing an alien cult that led to Roman apostasy. So the Roman Empire fell away because of these people, because of these people who are following the Messiah and separating, which is happening uh, today as well. Let's look at the word cult. It says a particular system of religious worship. Cause this word gets a lot of bad rep, but it just says a, a particular system of religious worship especially with reference to its rites and ceremonies, the object of such devotion. See, a group or sect bound together by veneration of the same thing, person, idea. So there's nothing wrong with being a part of a cult, man. All right, because it, like we just read that, you know, this alien cult, this body of people that had the, the same mindset led to the Roman apostasy. And that's what's happening now. You got people of the same spirit, the same mindset that are separating from the ways and the idols of this world, this current system, which is this, this new age revival of the Roman Empire. And this thing is, 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 is having an, an, an apostasy. America is going through an apostasy. All right. And all of this is going to lead to persecution. Again, this is uh, what uh, Romans, the 12th chapter is about. When you go into, uh, you know, verse 12, him coming down with great wrath because he know that his time is short. Now, verse 17 says, and a dragon was wroth with the women. And that dragon represents the Roman Empire going all the way back to Herod, particularly. But the Roman Empire, Esau, Edom, the woman represents Israel, particularly the, uh, the, the, the remnant, the elect, which is that faithful woman coming back to the Lord. It says, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed. And and again, one of their idols was Mars. The the that was the god of war. All right. It says which keep the commandments of and and how you know this is talking about the nation of Israel and not an actual woman because it says her seed. And the Bible specifically tells you what the seed goes back to the Greek word sperma, which means of course what it sounds like speed uh sperm sperm right. So sperma that's what the seed is, man. The semen viral, see the product of this semen, and we know that men have 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 semen. So it says, which keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Yahweh Shammashak. So, you know, this system, this Roman Empire is about to come after the Israelites, the Christians again, the true worshippers, right? Jeremiah. 
John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh. Let's get 22. All right. It says, you worship, you know not what. Because these people talking about they Christians, they don't know what the hell they worshiping. All right. We know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. But the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seek of such to work worship him. So the Most High requires you come in spirit and truth to worship him. You see, verse 24, God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And these modern day Christians, Christians ain't worshiping, you know, in the spirit of truth. Let me check and make sure. See when my bus coming. Spirit was on me to do this lesson. I got to get ready to wrap up. So, and it just goes on to this, uh, to uh, to to Nero and his persecution, which he he burnt down uh, something, some shit he burnt down and blamed it on the Christians. I think that during his time period, uh, Peter was put to death, etc. But then you you go down later on in the time period around 313, it said, uh, which permitted all religions, including Christianity, to be tolerated. So eventually, you know, a few hundred years later, um, you know, uh, Christianity, you know, this whole thing was was made OK. It was accept, accepted, you see, which led to eventually, you know, the Bible being, you know, an acceptable book. And, you know, this, which is why we have, you know, access to the scriptures today. I'll pray see how about Shimmy I was shy. So, you know, I just want to talk about this, man. I ain't really have anything in any particular points. I just wanted to make I just wanted to speak about the persecution of the Christians and how we're in that revival of the Roman Empire and how following the Messiah is gonna to lead to being persecuted, put to death, some of us. And, you know, that's just that's something to think about. You know, don't don't forget that. Cause uh modern day Christians don't don't lay that to heart. They think it's about being prosperous in this world by being a Christian. You know, being saved to them don't don't mean a damn thing. But to us, being saved, we we want to be saved. You know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna close that through spirit. I pray it was uh, edifying. I catch you on the next one. Shalom.